Hello, and welcome to this presentation about mobile phone data for dynamic population mapping. My name is Simesko from Positium, a company in Estonia. I'm going to talk to you about how mobile phone data can be used as part of the population data system in a country. And this work has been done in collaboration with other expert organizations in the UN Committee of Experts, organizations like Flomider, University of Tokyo, UN Population Fund, UN Statistics Division, PPS, Statistics Indonesia, and the World Bank. Also, we have included in the guide that we produced comments from many others. When we think about development challenges and decisions needed to address those challenges, then we also have to take into account how people move and where they are at a certain point and at a certain time. So decision makers need data on population and they need it in a dynamic way in greater detail and need it faster. So how do we think about this? One way to think about it is through a data model. Can we make a data model using spatial data that takes the real mobility of people and accurately models that uh, in statistics? The current population methods that we have are census and population uh, registers. Yes, they are good. They are also very static. And uh, there are some challenges involved in providing the census, which come down to cost, timeliness, response burden. All of these create some challenges in the current population data generation, especially when we want to have uh, more timely information. The registers are a good source of timely information, um, although timeliness could be improved and, and a good quality system of registers is usually needed. Even then there are some under and over coverage errors, but most importantly, these data sets, as good as they are, uh, they are still very static. When we think about dynamic population mapping, what do we mean? So one way to look at it is how to map population more dynamically in terms of time not being dependent uh, on the log logistics of surveys or the census, and to how to map a population behaving in dynamic ways. So understanding where people are de facto present at any time, even if they are away from their place of residence. And we can do that by building a model with spatial data, with mobile phone data. Uh, this model is based on mobility data, but then you can take out results that accurately reflect how the population behaves in a certain place, in a certain time. And also how many of these people that are in a certain place, how many are they um, there because they are residing, because they're working, because they are visiting uh, that place and compare different places to each other. What are the applications of this data? In the guide on the use of mobile phone data for population mapping dynamically, uh, we did go through eight different cases uh, where mobile phone data could be used either to enhance the current statistics that we have or monitor uh, population redistributions by because of uh, some external effects to have data for infrastructure and resource planning. Uh, use this data to create better sample frames for surveys or even in the census. And some examples of that. So in terms of resident population, we know that this is the main outcome of the census. What are the demographics in different areas at a certain time? But with a dynamic model, we can also reflect how that changes across time. So month by month, how many people are actually at their place of residence? How does that change during seasons? For example, in summer periods, are some cities losing people? It adds a more dynamic aspect. Now, of course, also, where do people spend their days, uh, especially the working time? Can we clean and process the data and detect work time anchors so that we can aggregate um, this data to a grid or a municipality level and understand 
the amount of people at work and on any given day. Then a next step from that is we take a day or an hour or 15 minutes and we look at population dynamics within that time frame in a certain location. And this kind of information is very useful for national and local governments for public service planning, also for law enforcement to allocate resources, and it's also used by disaster management agencies uh, currently in different countries. And of course, what we want to do is to either have similar data that we have from the census or complement the census. And we can do that during different phases of the census, for example, in the planning or implementation phase. Implementation, it's very useful in certain countries where you have hard to reach areas, which it's almost impossible to have 100% uh, census in that area. So you can use mobile phone data results to estimate what would be the population numbers in those areas. Or you can use mobile phone data for cross-referencing and validation purposes, or enhance the census with additional features that are uh, usual from mobile phone data, for example, data and population, migration, or commuting results. And then once you have anchored the mobile phone data to the census day, you can have a population projection from there to have more data during the intercensal period. And of course, some countries are already experimenting with carrying out the census through innovative combinations of technologies. For example, have a data-driven census combining the signs of life from administrative sources and from big data sources. Even in those countries where population registers are not complete. So once you get these slides, you can see one study done in Estonia. There are, of course, methodological questions and our methodological guide on the use of NPD for dynamic population mapping should be able to help you there, at least to get you on your way. For example, how to build the right data model, uh, what do you have to take into account, how to detect place of residence and which home detection algorithms should you choose, how to ensure data coverage and representativity, and how to model the results how to validate the results. So we know that how you choose the criteria in how you detect home, home in your algorithms influences the results significantly. There's a study done in France that says that the results could be influenced by up to 40% on average. So in immersion area basis, the difference could be even higher. And how do you validate whether the home detection algorithm actually worked. So one way is to compare the aggregate from the census, still done with traditional means with mobile phone data result on a country level or on a city level. And here you have an example from Portugal, but such examples exist from other countries as well. Or you could create your own volunteer panel that gives access to both uh, their home address and to the mobile phone data from their mobile network operator. So once a panel has been selected and a survey conducted, like in this case in Estonia, you can compare the algorithm and the survey results to understand person by person whether your algorithm is correct. And hopefully you can reach these kinds of results. Of course, there are practical next steps you can take. Uh, do join the MPD task team and read the guide. Uh, specify needs, reach out to stakeholders, including experts like us or funders to understand if your concept can be built into a project and position mobile phone data in your strategy for the development of statistics. You can read more in the methodological guide on the use of mobile phone data for dynamic population mapping. I'll include the link one more time here. And if you have any questions, you can always write to me with the email address that you see here. Hope to see you on your journey on the use of mobile phone data for population 